Hi everyone, I'm Jamie from Chegg Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about many possible definitions of the exponential function, e to the x. Now note, exponential functions can have any base. The function e to the x is a very special version of that function, but say a function that was 2 to the x is also an exponential function. It grows exponentially and it has a very the exponent is a variable rather than say x squared where the exponent is a constant and the variable is the base. These are all equivalent ways of defining e to the x except for this one. That's a property of it. So e to the x can be defined as a limit. The limit as n goes to the infinity of 1 plus x over n all of that to the nth power. Now you'll notice that that means that the n is in the um, is in the exponent as well as in the denominator of this addition. So um, e to the x here is going to be defined by a continued multiplication, in fact an infinite multiplication, where the thing that's being multiplied is getting closer and closer to 1. That's how we know that, the, well intuitively, that this limit can in fact exist because x over n with a fixed x is going to get closer and closer to 1. So eventually you're going to be multiplying by something arbitrarily close to 1, which gets you a finite limit. You'd have to prove that more formally, of course, but this is the basic idea. e to the x is also the unique function that is its own derivative. In other words, if you take the derivative of e to the x dx, you get back e to the x. This is useful in problems where you have the growth rate proportional to the um, the amount of stuff that's available. So for example, if you have um, k, some constant k times x, and the derivative is um, proportional to this, then, um, sorry, the derivative is proportional, proportional to k times f. Um, then you're going to have that um, the, uh, the solution is some version of an exponential function. And this is really useful because it's pretty common. The common example is, say, if you have a, a bunch of bacteria, the growth rate, of if, if the growth rate of the bacteria, which is this derivative, the number of bacteria is equal to some constant times the number of bacteria, um, then you're going to have an exponential growth in the amount of bacteria. And this kind of makes sense as a differential equation, equation with the derivative of the function and a function, because um, the more bacteria you have, the more bacteria are going to reproduce at each time step. So, um, so you should have the growth rate proportional, or increasing at least, as um, the value of the function itself goes up. One other way that you can define e to the x is by its Maclaurin series, like a Taylor series. Um, where e to the x is defined as the sum, infinite sum, n equals 0 to infinity, of x to the n over n factorial. You can get that from the fact that e to the x is its own derivative, um, simply by applying the definition of a Maclaurin series. Um, one other thing, the graph of e to the x looks like this. So if we were to superimpose the graph of x squared or x to the n or any um, polynomial, you might have you might have that e to the x is below it for a while, but eventually e to the x is going to outgrow any polynomial function in x. We kind of see that where it's the sum of x to the n over n vectorial. The n is arbitrarily high degree, so eventually the that sum is going to exceed any um, power of x. So the exponential function grows faster than any polynomial. Um, which becomes important in physics and in computer science when you're dealing with an exponential function. That's it for now, and see you next time.